Today we are talking about the concept of a mole. Now we've heard of terms used to group things together, like saying a dozen eggs. And we know that a, if we said a dozen eggs, then we mean 12 eggs. If I said I had a dozen pencils, then I would have 12 pencils. We know that dozen means 12. So we're talking about a quantity with this term dozen. If I said I had a dozen cars, how many do I have? 12. If I had a dozen calculators, I have 12. So we know that this term implies 12. If I said I had a pair of shoes, this is another example where a pair implies that I have two. If I had a pair of socks, I would have two socks, a pair of mittens, two mittens. So this is similar in chemistry terms. We can say that we have a mole of something, and a mole of something implies that we have this really large number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that substance. Now, it could be atoms, it could be ions, it could be molecules, it could be particles. It's still a method of counting how many we have. So the mole, or the abbreviated MOL in chemistry, is chemistry's counting unit. Now, I want to take a minute to look at our counting unit, the dozen. Let's write two forms of the conversion factor that will help convert a dozen to number of objects and the number of objects to a dozen. So a conversion factor would be, if I said I had one dozen of something, there are 12, in this case we're gonna say eggs. Or we can say that there are 12 eggs in one dozen. So this is a conversion factor. Kind of like if I said, thinking back to our metric conversions, that one kilometer equaled 1,000 meters. Or we could say that 1,000 meters was equal to one kilometer. We could use either one of those to convert. So let's look and see how would we convert 3.75 dozen eggs to number of eggs. Well, we always start with what we're given. So let's do 3.75 dozen. Now, which conversion factor would I use? Would I use one dozen over 12 eggs or 12 eggs over one dozen? Well, I have to cancel out my units, so my dozen would need to be on the bottom. I would say the 12 eggs on top, one dozen on the bottom. See how dozen and dozen cancels out? So 3.75 times 12, we would have 45 eggs. Let's look at number three. I want to use the appropriate conversion factor to convert 248 eggs into dozen of eggs. Which conversion factor would I use? Obviously the one where the eggs is on the bottom. So in this case we would do 248 divided by 12 or 248 times 1 divided by 12 would give me 20.7 dozen because our units cancel out diagonally. This number is called Avogadro's number. Now, like I said, it's a counting unit. If I had a dozen cars or a dozen pencils, those are two very different things, but I know that there's still 12 of that. So I can say that I have a mole of carbon, and that means that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. If I had a mole of water particles, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water particles. So if I said I had one mole of copper ions, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copper ions. So it is a counting unit. Now, this is a really big number, really big. It would be like taking 602,000 times a million, times a million again, and times another million. If we wrote it out, look how big this number is. Thank goodness we have scientific notation. So we can write it as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 
Now it's such a big number because it's not like we can see uh, with our dozen eggs, we can see our 12 eggs and we can count those individually to verify. But we cannot see one carbon atom or one water particle or one copper ion. They are just too small to see. So we have to have a whole lot of them in one group to be able to quantify that. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, particles, ions, molecules of any, any of those is equal to one mole of that. Some interesting facts about understanding the magnitude of this number. It would take 20 quadrillion years for a person to count to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to actually count that high. How do we know that? Well, I'm sure that somebody timed themselves counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, 20, and then times that by how much it would take to get to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it would take 20 quadrillion years. A mole of donuts would reach from Earth to the sun and back 200 billion times. If I had one mole of softballs, the volume of that would be about the size of the earth. If I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd marbles, that volume would be about the size of the moon. One mole of Olympic shot put balls would have about the same mass as the earth. And this is the best part to help you understand the enormity of it. If one mole of pennies were distributed equally among six billion people, each person would get one times 10 to the 14th pennies or about one trillion dollars. So with that, we are able to make a new conversion factor. And this is gonna come in handy in the whole rest of this course and in chemistry in general. It allows us to start thinking this quantity and start to kind of put it into perspective. If I know that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium, which is equal to one mole, I can put it in a conversion factor like this, or I can flip that numerator and denominator around and I could write it like this. So knowing this, I want you to try to do this calculation. How many sodium atoms are in 0 0.240 moles of sodium? And we're going to solve this using unit analysis. So we're going to write down what we're starting with. And we know that's 0 0.240 moles, we can abbreviate MOL of Na. It's asking us to find atoms and we have moles. So we need to go, okay, well my conversion factor, we know that for every one mole, of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's asking for atoms. And we also know that we can make write the reciprocal of this. And we can say, well, that's also equal to 6.02 oh, times 10 to the 23rd atoms for every one mole of atoms. So now we need to look at this problem and say, all right, I have moles, I need to get rid of moles, so I need moles on the bottom and add on, on top. So I would use this conversion factor, so moles and moles will cancel out. Now on your calculator, we need to type in 0 0.240 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So please make sure that you are using your calculator correctly. If you type it in, you should get 1.4448 times 10 to the 23rd. If you did not get this, please go back and try typing it in differently. If you don't know how to use your calculator, then this is going to be a huge frustration for calculations to come for the rest of the semester. So please, please, please let me know if you need help with how to put scientific notation into your calculator. Now, the last thing we need to do is go back and say, how many significant figures did I start with? And I started with three. Six. So I need to have three in my final answer, and that four is not going to do anything to the four. So 1.44 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium, Na, and circle your final answer. 
And this is a nice, neat way. I can go the reverse way. If I said that I'm starting with 3.42 times 10 to the 21 atoms of aluminum, how many moles is that? Again, we can set up our conversion factor. So now we need to say, okay, well, this is what I'm starting with. So I need atoms down here, and I what do I want? I want moles. What have I got? I've got atoms, right? It's what you want over what you've got. So I need to use the conversion factor that has moles on top and atoms on the bottom. So here is where it is very important. Since both of my numbers have scientific notation, I would recommend using parentheses. And I would type in parentheses. 3.42 times 10 to the 21st divided by, so I would have in parentheses, 3.42 times 10 to the 21, parentheses, close that, then hit divided by, and now another parentheses, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and end that parentheses, and your calculator should spit out 0.00, .00 zero, six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or it might have given it to you in scientific notation. Your calculator might have said 5.68106 times 10 to the negative three. Either one of those is correct. Hooray, if it gave you that jump up and down and celebrate that you are using your calculator correctly. The last thing we need to do is significant figures. I have three sig figs in my initial starting, so I need to have three at the end. So you can leave it as 0 0.005681 moles of aluminum, or we could say 5.68 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of aluminum. Either one of those is perfect. You only need one. Let's do two more practice problems just for fun. See if you can set this up to calculate the number of atoms or molecules in 0 0.0763 moles of chlorine gas and calculate the number of moles of potassium in 1.25 times 10 to the 21st atoms of potassium. Pause the video and see if you can set up this dimensional analysis. Did you set this up correctly? If I started with moles, I have to have my mole down at the bottom to cancel out. We know that for every one mole of chlorine, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine. I started with three sig figs, so I need to end with three sig figs. What about for the second one? Hopefully you started with your atoms of potassium that our problem gave us. So I have to have my atoms on the bottom and my one mole on top. And if you plugged it into your calculator correctly, and I finished with three significant figures just like this, you could also put it in decimal form. It would be 0 0.00208 moles of potassium. That's still three sig figs. So again, this is going to help us in the future when we start dealing with stoichiometry, figuring out the mass, the volume of different quantities, when we are looking at concentration and different solutions. So this is gonna come in handy for the rest of the semester.